Good morning. It is Tuesday the 14th of February 2023, uh, Tuesday in the week of Sexagesima, a week and a half before Lent begins. We're here at the Rectory of St. John's Church in Savannah for morning prayer, according to the 1928 prayer book, bolstered by 1662. And so we're here to render thanks to God for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. But first, as scripture teaches us in sundry places, let us acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep, We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, a most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers, to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship, and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today... If ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. You know, there's kind of two halves to that invitatory psalm, that call to worship. On the one side, this call to, indeed, to worship, to delight in the Lord, to delight in the strength of our salvation, to, to delight in the fact that the Almighty uh, Creator, uh, infinite in wisdom, power, and goodness, has claimed us for his own, has made himself his own people. And then the other half is this, uh, you know, claim on our word, on our attentive listening to his word, of our taking it to heart. Um, and, uh, of course, the two things are, they're not separate. They're, in a certain sense, uh, if we do delight in the Lord, 
uh, and in his grace toward us, then we will most certainly give heed to his words. And if we don't give heed to our words, it's because we don't delight in the Lord. So these two things um, work together, and they are indeed the very substance of our worship. The Psalms uh, today, for the 14th day of the month, um, are Psalms 71 and 72. That begins on page 425 in the 1928 prayer book. Psalm 71 is a psalm of David in his old age, and against uh, his failing strength, he sets um, uh, the living memory of God's faithfulness and a growing hope of his power. In thee, O Lord, have I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion, but rid me and deliver me in thy righteousness. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. Be thou my stronghold, whereunto I may always resort. Thou hast promised to help me, for thou art my house of defense and my castle. Deliver me, O my God, out of the hand of the ungodly, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For thou, O Lord God, art the thing that I long for. Thou art my hope, even from my youth. See, he doesn't want God for the sake of the things that God can give. He wants God. Through thee have I been holding up ever since I was born. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's womb. My praise shall be always of thee. I am become as it were a monster unto many, but my sure trust is in thee. O let my mouth be filled with thy praise, that I may sing of thy glory and honor all the day long. Cast me not. Now, so now he comes to the... the uh, um, heart of uh, as so often the psalms are organized in a kind of chiasmic way like Chinese dolls or Russian dolls and uh, so the, the very center is often the critical part cast me not away in the time of age forsake me not when my strength faileth me for my enemies speak against me and they that lay wait for my soul take their counsel together saying God hath forsaken him persecute and take him for there is none to deliver him. And of course, here David is speaking prophetically of great, his, his much greater son, uh, Jesus. Go not far from me, O God. My God, haste thee to help me. Let them be confounded and perish that are against my soul. Let them be covered with shame and dishonor that seek to do me evil. As for me, so now he turns from present uh, uh, pressing uh, petitions to, um, and, 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 and there's a note of rising hope here. As for me, I will patiently abide always and will praise thee more and more. My mouth shall daily speak of thy righteousness and salvation, for I know no end thereof. I will go forth in the strength of the Lord God and will make mention of thy righteousness only. Thou, O God, hast taught me from my youth up until now. Therefore will I tell of thy wondrous works. Forsake me not, O God, in mine old age when I am gray-headed, until I've showed thy strength unto this generation, and thy power is uh, to all them that are yet for to come. Thy righteousness, O God, is very high, and great things are they that thou hast done, O God, who is like unto thee. O what great troubles and adversities hast thou showed me, and yet didst thou turn and refresh me, yea, and broughtest me from the deep of the earth again. Thou hast brought me to great honor, and comforted me on every side. Therefore will I praise thee in thy faithfulness, O God, playing upon an instrument of music. Unto thee will I sing upon the harp, O thou Holy One of Israel. My lips will be glad when I sing unto thee, and soul of my soul whom thou hast delivered. My tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness all the day long, for they are confounded and brought unto shame that seek to do me evil. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. So that psalm, we hear an echo of the long uh, uh, string of uh, laments and prayers in which the uh, zealous servant of God's kingdom, even his anointed one, the Messiah, um, if, turns to God for refuge against the enemies of God's kingdom. Now in Psalm 72, David looks forward to the reign of his son, and uh, who, of course, in, historically is Solomon, uh, but we also read this figuratively and prophetically of Christ, and indeed it fits Christ much better than Solomon. Uh, so we begin, uh, he speaks of the righteousness uh, that he desires for 
his heir. Give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. Then shall he judge thy people according unto right, and defend the poor. The mountains also shall bring peace, and the little hills righteousness unto the people. He shall keep the simple folk by their right, defend the children of the poor, and punish the wrongdoer. That's the primary task of the king to uphold uh, the right against the wrong. Now he prays for his endless reign. They shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endureth from one generation to another. He shall come down like the rain upon the mown grass, even as the drops that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish, yea, an abundance of peace, so long as the moon endureth. So his righteous reign is to be endless, but also to be boundless. His dominion shall be also from the one sea to the other, and from the river unto the world's end. They that dwell in the wilderness shall kneel before him. His enemies shall lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall give presents. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring gifts. All kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall do him service. And of course, this is why we read this psalm at Epiphany. We think of Christ's uh, op- uh, manifestation to the Gentiles. Uh, and this uh, kingdom of righteousness is also a kingdom of mercy and compassion. For he shall deliver the poor when he crieth, the needy also, and him that hath no helper. He shall be favorable to the simple and needy, and shall preserve the souls of the poor. He shall deliver their souls from falsehood and wrong, and dear shall their blood be in his sight. So uh, the righteousness of this kingdom um, uh, will be one of, brings endless blessing. He shall live, and unto him shall be given of the gold of Arabia. Prayer shall be made ever unto him, and daily shall he be praised. There shall be an heap of corn in the earth, high upon the hills. The fruit thereof shall shake like Lebanon, and they of the city shall flourish like grass upon the earth. His name shall endure forever. His name shall remain under the posterities, which shall be blessed in him, and all the nations shall praise him. Blessed be the Lord God, even the God of Israel, which only doeth wondrous things, And blessed be the name of his majesty, and all the earth shall be filled with his majesty. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the 19th chapter of the first book of Moses called Genesis. Uh, The lectionary wants us to jump over, uh, in a fit of delicacy, uh, the... the, uh, some of this passage, we're going to read the whole of it. Um, it's a story, of course, both of judgment and deliverance. Um, judgment on uh, the uh, cities of the plain for their, uh, what is in broad sense, their sin against the duty of hospitality, um, uh, but of course has a very particular focus in uh, how that malice towards the other is expressed. And, uh, and then the deliverance, barely, of Lot. And this is all he's delivered indeed um, through the intercession of Abraham as we read uh, at evening prayer yesterday. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot seeing them rose up to meet them, and he bowed them himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, I turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house. And tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. So law honors the sacred duty of hospitality, just as Abraham had. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came in unto thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. Uh, So a kind of suspicion, hostility towards the outsider. Of course, a ambiguity in the word know is this intellectual knowing or sexual knowing. And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after him, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Lot divines their uh, malicious intent. Behold, now I have two daughters, which have not known man. And 
there, of course, knowing in the sexual sense. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Of course, we're appalled at Lot's suggestion, and rightly appalled. And uh, the Bible invites us, indeed, despite, without any comment, to see that Lot's sojourn among the people, the, the cities of the plain, has not improved his moral clarity. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came into sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. We, now will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break down the door. But the men, the angels, put forth their hand, and pulled Lot into the house to them, and shut to the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides, son-in-law, and thy sons and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place? An echo, of course, of Noah's uh, deliverance with his family. For we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out, and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. Uh, again, one sees um, Lot's, it, it, Lot's failure here, uh, not only his own moral vision, but to, to uh, in his failure to transmit um, uh, the uh, way of the Lord uh, to his family. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, uh, there's a little Jude appearance here, Arise, take up thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth, and set him without the city. So we may feel this is a compassion which Lot hasn't deserved, and no doubt that's the case. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, O not so, my lord. Behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. Behold, now this city is near to flee it unto, and it is a little one. O oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar, which means little. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from him and also, and she became a pillar of salt. A kind of eloquent symbol of a failure to resolutely turn from the cities of this world unto the judgment of God. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the city land of the plain. And beheld, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow, when he overthrew the cities in the which Lot dwelt. So um, it is Abraham's intercession that has won Lot's deliverance. And now a sad, uh, pathetic uh, ep uh, epilogue to uh, the story of Lot, and really his, uh, and of course his disappearance from the history of God's people. And Lot went up out of Zoar and dwelt in the mountain, and his two daughters with him. For he feared to dwell in Zoar, and he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, 
and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. They think the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah is the destruction of the world. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night. And the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesternight with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also, and go thou in and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And, of course, it says something that they know that Lot will only do this under uh, the influence of, of intoxication. Uh, he's not entirely lost. And they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she rose. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. And the firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab, the same as the father of Moabites unto this day. And the younger, she also bare a son and called his name Ben-Ami. The same is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. Here endeth the uh, first lesson. O let the earth bless the Lord. O ye mountains and hills, bless ye the Lord. O ye green things upon the earth, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye wells, bless ye the Lord. O ye seas and floods, bless ye the Lord. O ye whales and all that move in the waters, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye fowls of the air, bless ye the Lord. O ye beasts and cattle, bless ye the Lord. O ye children of men, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O let Israel bless the Lord. O ye priests of the Lord, bless you the Lord. O ye servants of the Lord, bless you the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye spirits and souls of the righteous, bless you the Lord. O ye holy and humble men of heart, bless you the Lord. O Ananias, Azarias, and Mysiel, bless you the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. Let us bless the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Praise him and magnify him forever. Amen. Here beginneth the 17th verse of the 20th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. And here uh, we're coming very near to the end of Jesus' journey up to Jerusalem. And we have a very important account both of Jesus, the destiny to which Jesus travels, and also of <laughs> the... <laughs> I'm having a little uh, cantankerousness from himself. Um, and also about discipleship of those who follow Jesus in the way. Uh, we see how little the disciples understand what that means. And perhaps, um, therefore, there's things for us to learn as well. And he left, sorry, wrong verse, wrong chapter. And Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples apart in the way and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. And the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles, to mock and to scourge and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. So a prophecy of rejection and vindication. Rejection by uh, Israel's leadership, vindication by God. A uh, very surprising a prophecy. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, this is James and John, worshipping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She saith unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other in the left, in thy kingdom. She wants the plumb positions in the kingdom, which she perceives in terms of earthly power and sharing the spoils of power. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Uh, ye, plural, he's speaking to the brothers, not just to the mother. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? He's not talking about a literal cup, or much less the cup of the Eucharist. He's talking about uh, the cup of God's wrath, which he will drink uh, on the cross. It's the cup which he will indeed plead with the Father to take away in the Garden of Gethsemane. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? Again, this is not um, the sacrament of baptism he's talking about, but rather baptism into the dark waters of death, 
uh, being drowned in death. They say unto him, We are Abel. And he saith unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. There both um, John will indeed suffer as a confessor, and James will uh, die as a martyr. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. It is of God's free grace that these, re the, that these uh, gifts are bestowed, not out of human entitlement or party, you know, connections. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. And you know, of course, their indignation was that they felt that they were being cut out. But Jesus called them unto him and said, You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. Over and upon, it suggests the idea of they're throwing their weight around, right, being the big man. But it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, whoever wants to be important, let him be your minister, which means here, servant. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. And we could actually translate that as slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. And so now we have both the example of Jesus uh, for us to follow, and also uh, an explanation of what he's doing in, in, uh, his, in being rejected and dying. He's giving his life a ransom for many. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him, and behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. So these blind men really stand for the disciples in their own blindness. Um, uh, they, but they are, these blind men are men of faith. They know that Jesus is the son of David, and in that faith they're ready to pray. And the multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. Uh, this is uh, their hope here. Uh, they, refuse, they refuse to be discouraged. Uh, uh, they are uh, redouble their efforts uh, in the face of uh, resistance. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will I? What will ye that I shall do unto you? They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. They followed him, of course, in the way he's going, which is up to Jerusalem, up to the place of death and resurrection, up to the place of uh, a life given as a ransom for many, up to the place of divine charity uh, towards all us poor blind beggars. Uh, they followed him in the way of charity, having begun in faith, perse persevered in hope, and now uh, in charity. And so may we. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, 
and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us pray. Bid your prayers for all sorts and conditions of men throughout the world, that God's ways may be known unto them, his saving health among all nations. I bid your prayers for Christ's holy Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by his good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith, unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. I bid your prayers for this country of ours and all countries, this state, si uh, county, city, for their peace, order, and good government, and for the deliverance of the peoples of the world from misery, strife, and oppression. I bid your prayers especially for the people of Ukraine and also of Turkey and Syria. I bid your prayers for the clergy and people of the Churches of Christ among all nations here at this place and in St. John's and Savannah, for their faithfulness of their witness and worship, and for all those who suffer in mind, body, or state, that the Lord would comfort and relieve them, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue from all their afflictions. Bid your prayers for all those suffering from debilitating injury or infirmity, especially stroke, uh, for criti uh, critical illness, chronic pain, cognitive impairment, all those dealing with anxiety, depression, or mental illness, those facing the challenge of sobriety, for the very old and the very young and their caregivers, for widows and orphans, for the abandoned and the abused, for the hungry and the homeless, for refugees, prisoners, and captives, for all women in childbirth, for those who are grieving, for those who are dying, and those who have departed this life in the faith of Christ and are at rest in him, that we with them may rise to glory. In this day, that being safe under the protection of the divine mercy, we may serve and please the Lord in everything that we do and be conformed thereby to the likeness of his Son. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O Lord God, who seest that we put not our trust in anything that we do, mercifully grant that by thy power we may be delivered, defended against all adversity. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. God, who at the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies. And we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. That's the cynical. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word of joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation, trial, hardship, fall away. Those are those, uh, that's the uh, work of the flesh. 
And that which fell among thorns, flesh, of course, cannot endure discomfort, displeasure for the sake of the gospel. And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and pleasures and riches of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. That's the world. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. May you bring forth fruit with patience, having held on to, kept, received the word of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in his peace and grant you your prayers as may be most expedient for you uh, according to his good and perfect will. <laughs>